Hi guys, in this video I'll show you the best wet setup for every track in F1 2020. This will be a slightly longer video than normal as it includes a lot of setups, but I've left timestamps in the description below so you can jump to any track. All of these setups have been created for long distance races using the wet weather preset. Starting with the aero, we run wings of 7 on the front and 9 on the rear, which is a few steps up from our dry setup. Set the differential to 50 and 65. 50% is a must in wet conditions and you'll see every one of our wet setups has an on-throttle diff set to 50%. Then set your camber to minus 2.6 and minus 1 and your toe to 0.06 and 0.23. Next up, we run a really soft suspension setup of 2 and 3 with your anti-roll bars at 6 and 8 and crank your ride height up to 8 and 9 to avoid aquaplaning. Then run your brake pressure lower than in the dry at 88% and your brake bias at 52%. Finally, set your tyre pressures low at 21.8 for both fronts and 19.5 for both rears. Again, the low tyre pressures will be a trend with all of our setups as they give you more traction on acceleration. Set your aero to five at the front and nine at the rear. This should give you enough downforce to stop the rear squirming out of corners. Then set your diff to 50% and 65% to help further with traction. Set your suspension geometry to minus 2.7, minus 1.1, 0.06 and 0.23. Then set your suspension to 2 and 3, your anti-roll bars to 6 and 7 and your ride height up to 7 and 8. Next, dial your brake pressure down to 85% to help avoid front locking in the wet conditions and set your brake bias to 52%. Finally, go with tyre pressures of 22.2 at the front and 19.9 at the rears. You can deflate your rears a touch more if you find yourself struggling for rear grip, but you really shouldn't have to with this setup. So your aero at 6 and 10. We need to keep the front aero low enough so we don't lose too much speed on the long straight. Then set your transmission to 50% and 60% for best traction. Set your camber to minus 2.7 and minus 1.1 and your toe to 0.06 and 0.23. Then Set up your suspension to be reasonably stiff for rainy conditions at 2 and 5, with anti-roll bars of 7 and 8, and a ride height of 7 and 9. Next up, lower your brake pressure to 88% and set your brake bias to 52%. Finally, run low tyre pressures at 21.8 for both fronts and 19.5 for both rears. Starting with the aero, set your front aero to 4 and rear aero to 8. This should be enough to keep your car planted while maintaining speed down the long back straight. Set your transmission to 50% on throttle for maximum traction and 65% off throttle. Then set your camber to minus 2.7, minus 1.1, 0.06 and 0.29. Next up, soften your suspension to 1 and 4 and run anti-roll bars of 4 and 7. Then set your ride height above average at 7 and 8. Set your brake pressure to 90% this should help avoid any lockups in the less grippy wet conditions and your brake bias to 52%. Finally, go with tyre pressures of 22.2 at the front and 19.9 at the rears. There is a little wiggle room on the rear tyre pressures so you can lower them if you're struggling for traction. Start with an aero setup of 7 and 10. A high rear wing angle is crucial to being able to drive this track with confidence in the rain. Then. Set your differential to 50% on throttle and 55% off throttle. Moving on to the suspension geometry, run your camber at minus 2.6 and minus 1.1 and your toe at 0.06 and 0.23. Then, just like many of our wet race setups, run a soft suspension setup of 1 and 3. The soft suspension will allow your car to be much more predictable in wet conditions. Balance this with anti-roll bars of 5 and 6 and a ride height of 6 and 8. Then, Set your brake pressure to 88% and your bias to 50%. Finally, run tyre pressures of 21.4 at the front and 19.5 at the rear. This will give you the best traction out of the slower corners. Starting with the aero, set your front wing to 6 and rear to 9. Then adjust your on throttle diff down to 50% and your off throttle to 65%. Next up, run a suspension geometry of minus 2.7 minus 1.1, 0.06 and 0.23. I've set up the suspension to be the softest it will be all season long at 1 and 2, while keeping the anti-roll bars higher at 5 and 8, and a balance ride height of 7 and 8. 
I'd recommend increasing the ride height by a click or two if you're looking at a full heavy rain race. Then set your brake pressure to 85% and your brake bias to 50%. And finally, run your tyre pressures of 22.6 and 22.2 at the front and 19.9 on both rears. Starting with the aero, crank both front and rear wings up to a maximum, then set your on throttle diff to 50%. These three setup options alone should give you a car which is stuck to the road and has a lot of traction under acceleration. Set your off throttle diff to 55%, then move on to the suspension geometry and go with a setup of minus 2.7, minus 1.2, 0.06 and 0.2. Moving on to the suspension, go with a soft setup of 1 and 3 with anti-roll bars of 4 and 7. This will help stop the rear of the car snapping away from you during the corners under acceleration. Round this out with a high ride height of 8 and 10. Then go with 85% and 50% on your brake setup and 22.6 and 20.3 for your tyre pressures. Set the aero to 3 and 7. Now this is very low for a wet race setup, but it is more than drivable and gives us a good balance of speed and grip. Set your transmission to 50% on throttle and 55% off throttle. This will help with traction out of the slower 90 degree corners. Moving on to the suspension geometry, go with minus 2.7, minus 1.2, 0.06 and 0.2. Then with the suspension go soft with 1 and 3, with your anti-roll bars at 4 and 7 and a ride height of 7 and 9. We need to crank the ride height up a little to deal with the elevation change during the middle of the lap. Set your brake pressure to 88% and your brake bias to 51% and then run tyre pressures of 22.6 at the front right, 23 at the front left and 19.5 on both rears. Set your aero to 4 at the front and 8 at the rear. Then set your transmission to 50% and 55%. Then set your suspension geometry to minus 2.8, minus 1.1, 0.06 and 0.2. Then go with a really soft suspension setup of 1 and 2 and anti-roll bars of 4 and 8 with a ride height of 7 and 9. Set your brake pressure to 90%. It needs to be high even in the rain just because of the extremely heavy braking zones from high speed. Then set your brake bias to 50%. Finally, set your tyre pressures to 22.2 at the front and 19.5 on both rears. Setting the rear tyres to the lowest value should really help manage wheel spin. Set your front wing aero to 5 and your rear wing aero to 8. This should give you enough downforce through the high speed corners without causing too much drag down that really really long straight. Then set your transmission to 50% and 65%. Go on to set your camber to minus 2.8 and minus 1.2 and your toe to 0.06 and 0.23. Then go with a suspension setup of 1 and 3, anti roll bar setup of 6 and 7 and a ride height of 6 and 8. This ride height is a little low compared to some of our wet race setup videos and if you're racing in the heavy rain condition I'd recommend increasing this to a sort of 7, 9 or even 8 and 10. Set your brake pressure to 88% and your brake bias to 52% and then set your tyre pressures to 23 on both fronts and 19.9 on both rears. Start with a front wing aero of 4 and a rear wing aero of 7. Then set your differential to 50% on throttle and 55% off throttle. Having a low off throttle differential should really make up for the low front wing aero and it will help you get your car turned into some of the slower speed corners. Moving on to the suspension geometry, go with minus 2.8 and minus 1.3 on the camber and 0.06 and 0.23 on the toe. Then suspension wise go with 1 and 2 with your anti-roll bars of 4 and 7 and a ride height of 7 and 8. Set your brake pressure reasonably high at 90% with brake bias of 50%. Then set your tyre pressures to 22.6 at the front and 20.3 on both rears. These are reasonably high rear tyre pressures for a wet race. And if you find yourself struggling for traction, especially out of the really slow turn three, you can lower these a little. Set your aero to five and eight and your differential to 50% and 55%. Then set your suspension geometry to minus 2.8 and minus 1.1 for camber and 0.06 and 0.23 for the toe. Then go with the suspension setup of two and three, anti-roll bars of four and eight, and a quite high ride height of eight and 10. 
This is because you will be riding over curbs even in the wet conditions and you don't want to aquaplane. Then set your brake pressure to 88% and bias to 52%. And finally, go with tire pressures at 21.8 on the front and as low as they go at 19.5 on the rear. Go with really high aero at 9 and 11. You don't really want to go any higher, otherwise you'll be sacrificing straight line speed. Then set your transmission to 50% and 55%. Again, the off bottle set at 55% should help your front end turn in a little bit better during the slow corners. Then set your camber to minus 2.6 and minus 1 and your toe to 0.06 and 0.2. Then go over the suspension with soft at the front and a little stiffer on the rear. Set that to 1 and 4. Set your anti-roll bars to 5 and 7 and your ride height to 8 and 10. This suspension setup will help your front end grip into the corners. But if you find it a little bit tricky to control on the corner exit, you can always lower your rear suspension stiffness a little. Then set your brake pressure to 90% and your bias to 50% and your tyre pressures to 21.8 at the front and 19.5 at the rears. The low rear tyre pressure should just help with traction on the corner exit. Set your aero to 4 at the front and 7 in the rear. Then set your differential to 50% on throttle and 55% off throttle. Moving on to your suspension geometry, set your camber to minus 2.7 and minus 1.2 and your toe to 0.06 and 0.2. Then run a really soft suspension setup at 1 and 2 and anti roll bars at 4 and 7 with ride height of 7 and 9. Set your brake pressure to 88% and your bias to 52% and then run tyre pressures of 23 at the front and 20.3 at the rear. If you're struggling for grip out of the first corner or the final chicane, you can lower your rear tyre pressures a touch. Set your front aero to 4 and your rear to 8, and then set your on-throttle diff to 50% and off-throttle diff to 55%. These settings alone should really help the rear of your car grip, especially out of the slower corners. Then set your camber to minus 2.6 and minus 1, and your toe to 0.06 and 0.2. Then set your suspension reasonably soft at 1 and 3 to help you get over some of those curbs, and your anti roll bars to 3 and 5, finally with a ride height of 6 and 8. Then set a reasonably high brake pressure to 90% as you will be braking from high speed into most corners, and your brake bias to 52%. Then set your tyre pressure to 23 at the front and 19.5 at the rear. When your front wing air at 10 and your rear wing at 11, you will need these this high to maximise your lap time throughout all of the corners. Then, set your on throttle diff to 50% and off throttle to 55%. Next up, set your camber to minus 2.6 and minus 1 and your toe to 0.06 and 0.2. Go the suspension setup of 1 and 3, an anti roll bar setup of 4 and 5 and go the high ride height of 8 and 10. You'll be riding over the curbs a lot at Singapore so you'll need this high ride height to stop yourself from aquaplaning. Set your brake pressure to 85% and your bias to 52% and then set your tyre pressures to 22.6 on both fronts and as low as they go at 19.5 on both rears. Set your front wing aero to 5 and raise your rear wing aero to 9. Then adjust your on throttle diff to 50%. This will really help get the power down out of those 90 degree corners without too much wheel spin. Then, Set your off throttle diff to 60%. Moving on, set your camber to minus 2.6 and minus 1.1 and set your toe to 0.06 and 0.2. Then run with the suspension setup of 1 and 3 and anti roll bar setup of 3 and 6 and crank your ride height up to 8 and 9. This will help you ride over those curbs at the apex of each corner. Then, set a high brake pressure for the wet at 92% and your bias at 50% and set your tyre pressures to 22.6 at the front and 19.9 at the rears. This should give you enough rear traction, but if you're struggling a little, lower the rear tyre pressure to 19.5. Set your front wing aero to 6 and 8, and your differential to 50% on throttle and 60% off throttle. Then set your camber to minus 2.7 and minus 1, and your toe to 0.07 and 0.2. Moving on, Set your suspension to 2 and 4, which is relatively stiff for a wet setup, and your anti roll bars to 5 and 8, with a ride height of 8 and 9. This slightly stiffer suspension setup should help your car's responsiveness, especially because Suzuka itself has a lot of direction change. Then, set your brake pressure to 88% and your bias to 52%. If you find yourself locking up, 
maybe into the hairpin or the final chicane, you can lower your brake bias to 50%. Then set your tyre pressures to 21.4 on both fronts and 19.5 on both rears. Start by setting your aero to 6 at the front and 9 at the rear. This is a good platform to start with, as it minimises drag but gives you good downforce at the rear end. Then, set your diff to 50% on throttle and 50% off throttle. This is a slightly unusual transmission setup, but the 50% off throttle will really help during that slow middle sector. Then, set your suspension geometry to minus 2.7, minus 1.1, 0.06 and 0.2. Run a reasonably soft suspension at 1 and 3 and anti-roll bars of 3 and 7 with a ride height of 7 and 9. The slightly stiffer rear on the anti-roll bars should help with the responsiveness, especially through the first sector and those S's. Then set your brake pressure to 90% and your brake bias to 50%. This is designed to slow your car down well at the end of the long straight, but the balanced brake bias should help with any potential locking up issues you have in that slower sector that follows the long straight. Then, set your tyre pressures to 21.4 at the front and 19.5 at the rear. This will aid with traction out of the slower corners. Set your front wing aero to 6 and your rear wing aero to 9. And then set your on throttle diff to 50% and your off throttle to 57%. The low off throttle diff should help a little with rotation in the slow corners. And this lets us run a slightly lower front wing. Then, set your camber to minus 2.6 and minus 1 and your toe to 0.05 and 0.2. Moving on to the suspension, set your front suspension to 1 and your rear to 3 and your anti-roll bars to 2 and 7. Then set a reasonably high ride height to 7 and 9. If you find yourself bouncing off the kerbs a little bit too much, increase your ride height maybe to sort of 8 and 10. Then set your brake pressure to 88% and your bias to 50% and set your tyre pressure to 21.8 at the front and as low as they go at 19.5 on both rears. Set your aero to 5 at the front and 8 at the rear and your on throttle diff to 50% and off throttle to 55%. Then set your suspension geometry to minus 2.7, minus 1.1, 0.06 and 0.2. Then go with a nice soft suspension setup of 1 and 3 with anti-roll bars of 3 and 7 and a high ride height of 8 and 9. Go on and set your brake pressure to 90% and your brake bias to 50% and round it all out with tyre pressures of 21.4 at the front and 19.5 at the rear. Start by putting your aero to 5 and 9 and then set your diff to 50% on throttle and 58% off throttle. Ultimately, we want a car with a lot of rear traction and these aero and transmission settings should help with that. Then set your suspension geometry to minus 2.7, minus 1.1, 0.05 and 0.2 and go with a suspension setup of 1 and 3, an anti roll bar setup of 3 and 6, and a ride height that's reasonably balanced at around 7 and 8. Then go with the brake pressure which is reasonably high for wet conditions at 90%, just to ensure you get that car stopped into the slow chicanes, and a brake bias of 50%, and round it all out with tyre pressures of 21.8 at the front, and really low at 19.5 in the rear, just to help with traction. And that'll do it for our Abu Dhabi wet race setup, and complete our wet race setup video series. As with all of the setups that have been in this series, this is designed to be used in long distance races and league racing, and if it helps you out, drop it a like. We will be doing much more sim racing content and F1 2020 content, so if that's your thing, subscribe to our channel to be notified when future videos drop. See you on track guys.